All right, second to last bit of the story here, okay? Um, Grimhild knelt, studying the tracks. She'd been following them for six days, since the Skulls and Holbrecht sung the legend of Whisperclaw, a fierce young mountain cat. Soon, she would challenge the beast and... Grimhild, a voice called from the mountainside above. With a start, she reached for her weapon. Had someone come before her? Was her prey dead by another's hand? In anger, the warrior straightened and peered up into the crags. She did not have to wait long to see her enemy. Who are you? She asked cautiously, fingering the blade on her axe. If this stripling had stolen her prize, she would make him pay, with pain. I am your death walking. The youth stood on a high ledge, balancing effortlessly. Four years ago, you cheated my father of his life. I'm here to avenge that debt. Ah, I remember you now. Grimhild stepped backwards and swept her axe from side to side. Your father was a weak little thing, as are you. I should have slain you as a child, but that old man talked me out of it. No matter, I will deal with you, and when I return to the Great Lodge, I will end that relic of a storyteller as well. The youth snarled, eyes bright with cold, bitter revenge. You've come here to hunt, he said, but you're the one being hunted. It is six days back to Holbrack over ice and snow with no safe haven, no lodges or campgrounds along the way. You think to fight me, she laughed. Kill me, Grimhild the Ferocious, the mightiest axe wielder among the Norn. You will die mewling like a kitten, young one. You are not powerful enough. You're right. I'm not powerful enough to face you on your own terms, so I'll face you on mine. The young hunter smiled wickedly. Snow Leopard trained me in stealth and tracking. She also taught me to steal my mind against slumber. I can go five days without resting. I'll die after six, but I'll do it if I must. But you, you have to sleep sometime, and I'm willing to bet my life that you'll rest before I do. Grimhild stared at him, the blood draining from her face. You would kill me in my sleep? I will wait until my prey is at her weakest, and then I will strike. The young hunter smiled grimly. And by Snow Leopard, I swear, you will never hear me coming. Woo! Oh man, I love that story. Oh, and, the, and the next bit of the story, by the way, is just like a single paragraph. It's so good. Okay, so we've got one last section here before we come back to the story. The last section is called Dragon. Okay, that's the only, that's the only word in the title for this one. Since the rise of Jormag, there are those among the Norn, always young, always male, and eager to prove themselves, who claim that dragons should be revered among the spirits of the wild. I remember when this post came out, somebody made a forum thread about why the sons of Svarnir are always male, and there was a reply to that. What was the reply? Why are they always male? I don't remember. Huh, I'm going to have to go look that up as well. Oh, I love this. Oh, man, I thought I knew. I thought I had pretty much what these blog posts said about it. It's pretty firmly in mind. But it's amazing how much you can forget in just a few months. Well, mind you, it's coming up on a year ago now, I suppose. Um, but yeah, so they're always young, always male, and eager to prove themselves. These Norn claim that dragons should be revered among the spirits of the wild. They admire Jormag's strength, its viciousness, and its cruelty. They claim that by following the path of dragon, a Norn can become as undefeatable as the dragon itself. They look at the tale of Jorah and her brother, Svanir, and see him as the first convert to the new spirit. Ah, oh, this is amazing, I love it. It's actual lore that goes back to what we saw in Eye of the North. It's so good. In the demos, you can find a statue of Jorah and everything. So good. Jorah, who did not accept Dragon's blessings, is reviled among their cult, as are all women. Interestingly, and then it's got in parentheses here, interestingly, Jormag does not show the same bias as its Sons of Svanir followers, who has been known to corrupt all races and all genders. Yeah, so you can see that the, what the Sons of Svanir kind of believe is flawed straight from the off there, but Dragon has no true shaman nor Havaran. Those who follow it do not have the ability to go into the mists on its behalf, nor do they have the gifts Norn expect to see in shamans of the spirits of the wild. See, what does this mean? What would the implications of this be? A, a, a Norn going into the mists on behalf of one of the Elder Dragons. What is the the, the, the Elder Dragons' relationship to the mists as well? Did, did they originally come from the mists? We've seen that the, the gods, which are arguably less powerful entities as the Elder Dragons, or so we've been told, could traverse through the mists. In fact, that's essentially what defined them as gods. That's how they got all their powers, being able to manipulate the mists. So surely the Elder Dragons could do the same. But then if they can do the same, why don't they just destroy Tyria and instead of going to sleep every time this cycle happens, just go through the mist to another place? Why? I mean, we've seen weird dragon-shaped dragon things in the, in the underworld. You remember the Twin Serpent Mountains? So, oh, so, oh, well, there's so many things to think about. Well, where, what direction could it go in? A dragon shaman may think he is spiritual, but he falls woefully short of the real thing. These advocates of the dragon teach only corruption. They are given foul blessings. They are changed forever by Jormag. In the end, they too become ice brood and serve the beast. 
They may call themselves shamans, but most Norn consider them fools, dangerous ones. Still, the promise of power and the challenge to be the one that masters the dragon's gifts continues to lure arrogant, driven young Norn into dragon's service. So yeah, um, they, they've mentioned the ice brood here. This is basically what Jormag will convert the Norn into once it kills them. Um, Norn culture stresses individuality. It demands that a person be judged by their own actions, not by the actions of the group to which they belong. If the three sons of... If three sons of Svarnir attack a shrine, those individuals are hunted down and punished. That does not mean that another Norn who claims to be part of the sons of Svarnir will be punished or treat treated badly because of the event. In the Norn mindset, he didn't do it, so he isn't to be blamed. That's so cool. It basically just means that the Norn are incapable of racism, essentially, as far as I can see it. This doesn't mean, though, that the Norn ignore a person's allegiances or that they don't understand the sons of Svarnir are dangerous people. It is simply that, as a race, Norn do not judge an individual for the sins of his tribe. I wonder if that mentality only applies to Norn though, because it's not like the Norn go up to every single individual dredge and ask them if, they, if they're really a bad person. They do just fight without questioning in those occasions, and they do the same with the Ice Brood, so there is a line somewhere among the Norn mentality. Um, but And then the, the blog post ends, aside from this next story that's coming up, by saying, Anon lives and dies by her own legend. And, and that's it. So, a very, very cool mentality. I can see why a lot of people do like the Norn. Um, the only place I see the race really falling short, uh, and it's a minor thing, and it, it shouldn't really matter to people. It doesn't matter so much to me, but I know it tends to matter a lot to the community at large. It's just the fact that they don't look particularly distinct as a, as a race. They just look like big humans, and it's a little bit of a shame. Um, so, here, here's how the blog post ends. It's with the conclusion of this story. Let me tell you a tale. Old Fiak the Scald raised his hands to the sky as the fires of the moot crackled and leapt. The story of a hero known as Viscar Whisperclaw. Hail the Honor Son, rightful rage tender, shadow striker, slayer of treasonous Grimhild. Viscar, who despite all challenges, was willing to give his life to claim blood debt from the one who had done him harm. So yeah, it kind of ends on, uh, I, I don't know whether that's a happy note or not. I, I guess the Norn see it as a good story. Because uh, let's not forget the line that we just read. A Norn lives and dies by her own legend. It's, it's all about, the, the Norn don't care. If they have to kill themselves to, ha to have a legend, to do something, to avenge someone, then they'll happily do it. And that's seen as a great thing to the Norn. This ends on a really happy note, really. Despite the fact that this guy basically commits suicide, he also took out Grimhild, which is uh, really, really good in the Norn eyes so great story great little blog post here i enjoyed it i remember reading this uh all that time ago so much cool stuff also guys if you're if you're listening to me and you you don't really have a presence on the forums uh do keep an eye out because when these come out we have such good discussions on guild wars 2 guru about this kind of stuff i mean don't shy away um particularly if you've never really done it but you've watched a lot of my videos you probably know a hell of a lot more than most people um who are out there on the forums because let's face it not mo not many people really care about this kind of stuff so uh so yeah i'd love to see a lot of you in those discussions from time to time there we go, that's that blog post, that's that for Frostmores. I'm going to uh, stop doing Audacity here, cut it, export it, and then I'll see you guys in a second to commentate over the end of Frostmores here. So I'll see you guys in a second. <sighs> Hi guys, Jesus, man, I am so sick of the sound of my own voice. I'm uh, going to commentate the rest of the dungeon here. Um, so where you can see us right now, we're on the fifth floor, the final floor, where we're actually stood. If you come here in hard mode, there's like loads of boulders and Jotun and stuff to fight here, um, which can be skipped. This floor is like really interesting. In that if you've got Light of Delgemore, you can actually activate this thing that opens a shortcut that allows you to dodge the, the snowballs and Jotun that are in this room. There's actually loads of them in here. I'm, I, I didn't realise that they only appeared in hard mode. Um, they're really cool. I wish I'd shown you them, but uh, it's just like that one chamber is just full of stuff that's going to run you over. But here, we'll come through this this door and do you remember what I said at the start about all the sort of the, the ground looking displaced and all the, the stuff where the worms seem to be on you? Look around. It, it just gives you the impression, this beautiful chamber that there's a load of worms under us. So the story of this um, basically is that we kill the lava, we just basically slaughter some worm children uh, right in the heart of where the worms are breeding from and it will summon forth the big bad boss at the end which is really cool. So you get these very easy worms to fight here. I deliberately chose not to fight here because um, it's very easy to for your screen to become a huge clusterfuck and I actually wanted a nice shot for this fight so basically at the start I wasn't fighting but man look at how beautiful this is totally unique room obviously I need I even say it it looks really good there's a mysterious door on the left actually I'm not sure I get an amazing shot of it that you can never get through very weird though that there's a door down there I'm not sure whether that's supposed to be like uh, a fast exit for us as we leave the dungeon or something yeah just down there on the left past that tree really really kind of weird but 
Oh man, I'll show you it in a minute as well when we move on to the other end of the chamber to kill that, that worm over there in the distance next to that tree. Uh, you can look out and it looks like we're just sort of poking out of the side of an iceberg or something. You can actually see it seems like you, there's actual real light on the other side. Like Even if you just saw there for a moment, if you look up, you can. I think that's the sky. That genuinely is, despite the fact we've been going down for so long. But look at that, look at that down there. That's amazing. I thought I did more of an extended shot of it, but like you just get to see the water. Thing is, I'm scared here because I, I don't want the, the, the baby worms to die. So there you go, we've killed the baby worms. Now some bigger worms are coming out, right? These siege worms. Two of them. One, two. And then another one will pop up on the right there. There you go. Three. So they're pretty damn pissed off, sieging the crap out of us. I think a fourth appears as well. Uh, on the right, maybe. Maybe I just don't get it in the shot. But there you go, and there's the final worm. Oh my god, one of the biggest worms in the game. Frostmore himself or herself, I suppose. Jesus Christ, look at it. Oh my god. And then you get loads of Frostmore spawns as well. Well, there you go. Frostmore's just teleported to me. You can barely even see the freaking thing. It's so big. You get loads of boss spawns as well around here. Those are the ones glowing green. Oh, it's just. What a brilliant fight. This fight is why I like this dungeon. It's a long dungeon. You spend ages. You're crawling through it. You're desperately going through. You know, you saw that we've been suffering. People have been dying. And oh my god. And you finally get to the end. And you have just this epic comp confrontation. Just slashing away at the heels of this freaking massive thing. It's so big. And as you know, I don't play with the target monitor on. Uh, it's so big that you can't actually see its health bar very easily. You can see it up there, um, but not too often. It's on about two-thirds health down already, but just a brilliant dungeon. I love the ambience of this room and how just beautiful this room looks with the single tree down there at the bottom. It's just so, so, so cool. I love worms, so this just it makes sense. For me, unless, as I said before, unless my opinion changes as we go through this dungeon series, um, this, this is definitely my favourite. Uh, as for the, the dungeon, man, Jesus, I've, I'm talking so much in these, I'm, I'm going to have to split the videos, because I swear, I, I can barely listen to myself talk just on and on, I switch off of myself, I'm supposed to be sitting here editing and making sure I don't slip up anywhere or whatever, and just, I, I bore myself, I really am boring myself, it's so bad, so I figure if I do it in separate bits, so you only have to sort of endure 20 minutes at a time, people will be able to keep their focus a little bit more, do let me know if if you, if you the law isn't doing it for you or anything, just please, just let, just let me know and we'll see how we can change up the series, but, um, but yeah, so we keep hammering in, I think he's about to die or she's about to die, uh, shouldn't be too long now. It's, the fight itself is quite hard, but at the end of the day, the dungeon's so hard that if you've made it here, you probably have the capability to take it. It's, it's one of those occasions, you know. Um, I'm always not sure. Oh, is that is that a down? No, there we go. I think she's about to die now. It's, it's always one of those things with me. I'm never look, look, look at worm bile. I'll take out the worms. There, the the norm there. That's amazing. It's so much damage. Uh, there you go. Down, down she goes. Boom. Pretty nuts. There you go. I get a nice shot of the edge now. That now that I'm not so worried. And, uh, yeah, we got a couple more spawn. But, yeah, as I was saying, it's one of those things, like, typical RPG dungeons and stuff, right? They always have a super hard boss. I'm not sure if I actually like that when games do that, because it makes everything you've done leading up to it just feel completely pointless. Yeah, admittedly, it makes it feel that much better when you finish. Like, completing the Gate of Madness, for instance, in this game, for, for me, was just incredible. It felt so good when I finally had it done, but... At the same time, it's it can be very frustrating. I, you know, it almost makes it feel like, well, what's the point of having an entire dungeon? Because you've not proved anything by completing that. If you haven't even got the power to finish off the boss at the end, you see what I mean? But, uh, but yeah, so I think that's all of them dead now. We can feel free to get our chest. Needless to say, being one of the harder dungeons, it's got some incredible skins here. There's an amazing bow you can get. Nobody got it. Someone got some nice daggers. Uh, I got a green and a lockpick, the Axe of the Kins layer. Um, but yeah, very, very, very cool dungeon. Uh, like I say, the, the very expensive stuff here. It's one of the few dungeons, I think it is possible. I think people have done it. It's a very difficult dungeon to actually run. Um... Uh, in fact, very specialised teams. I think the last one I saw of was like a five-man or something, but that was a long time ago. Anyway, Lathman says, My brothers are adventure at last. Many songs will be sung of our deeds, Matt. I must hunt down the remaining worm younglings hide in the mountains. You shared in Frostmore's downfall. Rest assured that your name will not be forgotten. So there you go. And then you can accept the reward. I like that they're actually here, and you can accept the reward from inside the dungeon this time. So you can zone out. You don't have to wait for the, the timer to count all the way down. Um, I'm trying to accept it that he's running around, uh, and yeah, it's just a, it's just a cool dungeon. I hope you guys like this dungeon. I enjoyed playing it very much. Once again, um, if you want to see uh, the dungeon again, but actually knowing what we were talking about, invent and, and listening to me and some other guys talking about stuff as we go through, uh, there will be an annotation to Magical Mike's channel and a link in the description of this video. So feel free to check that out. Uh, I think I'm about to run over to Frostmore herself so that we can do our, our little slash wave thing goodbye. 
Um, and yeah, so yeah, here we go. I just skipped forward. This is uh, all of us standing in front of. It's a pretty. Uh, that's not even Frostmore though. That's just one of the the freaking um, minor worms that were there. But in any case, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time. Three, two, one, wave. There we go. I actually have got another dungeon to film in like an hour. So yay for that. See you later, guys.